Hello viewers to this special show Doctor's Life. Well as we all know there is an old saying that health is wealth and therefore instead of ignoring we must pay attention to every health related issue whether that is major or minor to live a healthy life. In today's world it has become important that we keep a watch on our health, monitor them and to take care of our health and also the advices of medical practitioners to overcome health issues. But often we are clueless where should we go, whom should we approach, who will give us the best advice. Well, I'm sure you all also know at times look for the best possible advice but could not find the best place. Well, viewers, that's why Nagaland TV is bringing all those possible solutions at your doorstep with this special show Doctor's Life where on every episode we are going to discuss about a special disease that is very relevant and need to be addressed. Today in the episode, we are going to talk about a subject that often is not discussed due to some perceptions. There is psychological mindset because of that we do not open about discussing the subject. But it is time that we should address the issue and talk about it. Today we are going to talk about breast cancer and try to find out more on it. I am sure after watching this, all this episode, all your perception, doubts, queries will be sorted out and to talk more on this we have Dr. Naresh Jadav with us, a senior oncologist from Narayan Super Specialty Hospital, I mean Gao, to give us more insights on breast cancer. So let's start the show and also welcome Dr. Jadav. Thank you. All right, so I would like to know what is the breast cancer and how is this caused, doctor? Okay. Uh, so, what we need to understand that uh, we have different organs in our body, hmm. like you have the lungs, you have the brain, uh, you have the uterus. Similarly, breast is also an organ. Uh, so, for every organ, uh, the most basic constituent of that organ is a cell. So, I think uh, anybody who has read basic science would hmm. know that for every tissue, the basic organ is the cell. Now, this cell uh, when it multiplies out of control, uh, these cells tend to accumulate and form a tumour. You can just uh, consider uh, it like in your house, you sweep every day, you clean all the dirt. Mm. But when you fail to do that, the dirt tends to accumulate at one place and after some time it starts to smell. Similarly, in our body, the cells also grow and they have to die at a specific time. When this does not happen and the cells continue to grow and accumulate, they form a growth which we medically call it as tumour. Mm. So when this uh, tumorous growth occurs in the breast and when this spreads to nearby organs, uh, this is when we call it as a cancer of the breast. So it is a disease that affects breast. Mm. Okay. So is there any risk factors that would uh, cause this if somebody has a breast cancer and if he or she is not being tra treated, what are the risk factors to this? Okay. So uh, what we need to understand is that uh, breast cancer is a hormonally driven cancer. Hmm. Now in females, uh, there are two important hormones that uh, give female the secondary sexual characteristics. One is estrogen and one is progesterone. Uh, the overall lifetime estrogen exposure that a female has, has a significant impact on the possibility of developing cancer. For example, if a female has uh, menarche, that is onset of menses at a very early age and if the menopause is late, then her total exposure to uh, the estrogen hormone increases significantly, which increases this, the risk of developing breast cancer. Similarly, if the female is taking external hormonal supplements for other medical reasons, uh, those uh, to certain extent increases her risk of uh, breast cancer. Females uh, who tend to have their first child after the age of 30 mm. also have a risk, uh, increased risk of uh, developing breast cancer because uh, during pregnancy, uh, the level of estrogens are significantly lower compared to uh, uh, the uh, other times. So, pregnancy and breastfeeding disrupts this estrogen hormone cycle and it decreases the uh, overall lifetime exposure to estrogen of a female. So those females who have never uh, born a child or who get pregnant late in their life tend to have a higher risk of developing breast cancer. Apart from uh, the hormonal factors, obesity uh, is an important risk factor for uh, breast cancer. 
consumption of alcohol is an important risk factor for breast cancer and some of the breast cancers are also hereditary in nature. So, these are the common risk factors right. for okay, breast so cancer. So, is it is the risk factor and the symptoms same or are they different? Risk factors basically are those factors that will increase the chance mm. of developing a breast cancer in a female compared to an average risk female. Suppose uh, we have a female who uh, marries early, has a child early, does not have or does not take any external hormonal supplements, uh, does not use alcohol, her chance of developing breast cancer would be significantly lower vis-a-vis -a, -vis a female who does all of these things. Mm. So, risk factor, uh, these are those things that will increase your chance of developing breast cancer. Whereas, symptoms are those features uh, that develop in a female once she starts having this disease or once the disease is developing in her body. Hmm. So, may I know what are the symptoms that would lead to breast yeah. cancer? Yeah. So, as I previously said that uh, cancer is nothing but excessive accumulation of unwanted unnecessary cells in the body mm. which forms a tumor. Mm. So, the most common symptom with which females present to us is a lump or a tumor in the breast. Mm. Uh, normally to begin with these tumors are painless, uh, they are slightly hard in consistency. Uh, this may be associated with a change in the shape or size of the breast. It may be associated with a change in the appearance of the nipple, the nipple might be pulled inwards. Uh, apart from this, uh, you may also have discharge through the nipple. The mm. discharge can be watery, mm. it can be uh, blood stained or it can be frank bloody discharge from the nipple. Uh, think this, uh, in certain cases patients also develop swelling in the armpit, mm. which is the region that is closest to the breast. Uh, so, these are the common complaints with which uh, patients present to us. And uh, also, does it spread very fast or does it have a very accurate timing of it to spread? Okay. So, what we need to understand is that uh, the breast cancer grows in the breast to begin with. Mm. So, how rapidly or how slowly it grows slowly depends upon the biology of the disease. There are certain aggressive varieties of breast cancer which we call as triple negative breast cancer which tend to spread rapidly mm. and the relatively slow growing breast cancers like hormone positive breast cancers, they tend to grow slightly slowly. But the pattern of spread is more or less the same. To begin with, initially the tumor will grow inside the breast tissue mm. and it will increase in size. After that, it will spread to the nearby structures which we call as lymph nodes which are commonly situated in the armpit. So, mm. that is the area just adjacent to the breast. And over a period of time, these cancer cells start to spill blood from where they spread to organs outside the breast. For example, the cancer can spread from breast to lungs or they can spread from breast to liver. So, this is a stage at which we call that the breast has spread to distant organs which we medically call as metastasis. Hmm. So, uh, doctor, we have, we women, we tend to have lumps inside our breast. So, is it? Uh, do, should we caution when we have some feeling of lumps or some sort of glands growing inside our breast or is it that we should be aware we should be aware or we should ignore it and should we come to a doctor should we go consult a doctor fast when we have this kind of yeah, that's issue a, going that's a very good question on. actually so what we need to understand is that all lumps in the breast are not cancer hmm. uh, having a lump in the breast is a very common complaint especially in uh, menopause i mean especially in the ladies who are currently in their uh, reproductive uh, lifespan hmm. uh, so for every breast lump you should not be alarmed hmm. but yes you should uh, keep a watch for certain characteristics of uh, the lump in the breast hmm. you can watch for the fact that whether the breast lump is uh, growing or is it the size is same Number two, whether the breast lump has a specific timing with relate with relation to the periods. If the breast lump appears in the just before a female is supposed to have her periods, mm. uh, then uh, whether it, this lump is associated with any other complaints like a change in the appearance of the nipple or any distortion of the uh, nipple areolar complex or any change in the skin or any associated nipple discharge. So, if uh, 
apart from just having a lump in the breast if there are associated changes then definitely you should be alarmed and you should consult your doctor hmm. so doctor if i am the patient and if i consult a doctor what should be the diagnosis or the, what should be the process that the doctor sh will undergo okay so basically when any female comes to us with these complaints the first and uh, foremost thing we do is we do a complete physical examination of the female by this we basically palpate the breast lump and try and find out whether actually it's a breast lump or it is just a glandular breast sometimes a glandular breast might also be uh, mistaken as a lump in the breast so we tend to assess the presence of a lump whether it is there or not then we assess certain features like what are the consistency of it whether it is associated with any other changes that i just uh, described hmm. and when we feel that the possibility of this lump being cancerous is high then we ask the female to undergo certain basic testing like mammography or sonomammography hmm. in order to find the appearance what is the appearance of that lump and depending upon the initial test uh, we take a call whether uh, we need to investigate further or not so mostly if you be visiting a doctor he'll be examining you and depending upon the examination findings uh, he'll be advising you certain test in order to confirm or find out what exactly this breast lump is like hmm. okay and do we have any other treatments about breast cancer and also what would be the cost that it would charge okay so basically if we talk about treatment first and foremost we need to diagnose the breast cancer hmm. so before treatment we need to have two important uh, things at our hand one the diagnosis of breast cancer has to be confirmed to the extent that what subtype of breast cancer it is and number two what is the stage of breast cancer by stage i simply mean how much the disease has spread in the human body hmm. uh so if we talk in simple words we can categorize breast cancer into three stages early stage advanced stage and metastatic stage or last stage so once we have a confirmed diagnosis and once we know the stage depending upon the stage the treatment is planned so in a nutshell if you say if it's an early breast cancer the female will most probably undergo direct surgery or surgery will be the first line of treatment that will be offered to her and after surgery depending upon the tumor characteristics she may or may not require radiation or chemotherapy if the female comes to us with a advanced stage breast cancer then most of these cases will require all the three modalities of treatment that you give to treat cancer that is they will require chemotherapy they'll require surgery and they'll also require radiation now the sequence in which this treatment is given hmm. whether chemotherapy is to be given first followed by surgery or whether surgery is to be done first followed by chemotherapy and radiation is decided by a group of doctors who sit together uh, categorize everything about the patient her disease her stage and everything and then the therapy is planned but unfortunately when a female comes to us with metastatic stage or last stage then uh, the options of surgery and radiation are very limited because once the disease has spread to other organs uh, there is practical practically there is no possibility of cure so at this point of time uh, our aim is to control the disease for our, as long as possible for which we employ chemotherapy hormonal therapy targeted therapy and in nowadays immunotherapy is also come up in these patients now we will start with a question and we i also want to know if carcinoma breast cancer and this breast cancer the normal breast cancer is same doctor if yeah so basically uh, carcinoma of the breast is nothing but it's a medical term for breast cancer mm. so basically these two words uh, the meaning is same uh, just that when we talk in terms of uh, technical uh, terms carcinoma of the breast uh, is the actual technical word for breast cancer and what is the common stage for the breast cancer okay so as we know that in our setup in our country majority of the females don't come forward when they have uh, these initial symptoms for a large number of uh, socio economic reasons unfortunately because of this and also because of ignorance Uh, a large number of patients that we get are in a locally advanced uh, stage mm. which means that the tumor has already spread to the uh, lymph nodes in the axilla or in the armpit region mm. 
So, the drawback of uh, having a female in the locally advanced stage is that uh, these patients will require more treatment modalities. I mean, they will require surgery also, they will require radiation, they will require chemotherapy also. So, that increases the duration of treatment and obviously that increases the financial burden on the family. Uh, is it hereditary? Okay. So, uh, almost 5 to 10 percent of breast cancers are hereditary in nature. Mm. Uh, so, how do we identify certain cancers you know which are likely to be hereditary? So, their characteristics or patient profile is slightly different than the uh, sporadic uh, breast cancer patients. So, somebody who has a hereditary breast cancer will develop the breast cancer at a younger age say in her 30s. Hmm. Uh, the breast cancer will be more likely to be of the triple negative variety. Uh, it is likely to be more aggressive in its behavior and the patient will have a very strong history, family history hmm. of breast cancer. That means, there will be a number of first and second degree relatives who will be affected with breast cancer or other cancers like ovarian cancer. So, when a patient presents to us and this is the background of that patient, hmm. in those cases we strongly suspect that the cancer is hereditary and then we do the necessary genetic testing in order to confirm it. Yes. So, since you deal with lots of patients having breast cancer, is there any patients who come from Nagaland and whom you have dealt with? Uh, I have seen a couple of patients uh, coming from Nagaland and uh, one of them was unfortunately a metastatic case or a mm. stage 4 disease. She had taken treatment for her breast cancer, uh, but unfortunately the disease had come back and it had spread to other organs. Mm. Uh, and one of the patient was an advanced case of breast cancer which we treated. So, we do get patients from Nagaland. It is a very common uh, complaint. I mean, uh, it is practically known to many people that breast cancer is the most common cancer mm. in India and it is also the most common cancer in the world. So, you know, it is a it is a routine uh, thing that we tend to get patients with breast cancer. Doctor, why do you think breast cancer is a taboo for the society and why are we not forward to talk about this issue? Okay, so uh, again, uh, there are a lot of socio-economic factors that come into picture here. The level of the general level of education, unfortunately, in our female community, is still lower uh, than what we would desire. And uh, obviously, as compared to the Western world, it's not there. Mm. Uh, we are, as a part of our culture, we are not much open uh, in talking about uh, sexual-related issues as well as uh, you know uh, these uh, common complaints. Also females uh, generally do not tend to have uh, a bigger voice in the traditional Indian family. Uh, apart from this uh, you know the taboo associated with uh, having an illness that is related to your menses or to your breast, mm. you do not have uh, proper, proper people who can whom you can talk to or you do not have people who would give you the correct guidance. So, there are a lot of uh, socio-economic barriers which you know uh, keep our females down from coming up in open and discussing these problems. But that is not the solution. I mean keeping mum and you know keeping these problems restricted to you is only going to make the matters worse. Mm. It is better you come up, discuss it openly with an expert. There is no need to be feeling ashamed about it. Anybody can get any disease. So, there is no need to be ashamed about it. Discuss it openly with your doctors and I am sure you will get a good suggestion and it will save your life. So, for viewers who are watching this show right now, uh, I would also like to say this in Nagamis, I will just put it out in Nagamis that man bishi bak breast cancer lado khata kobli mon na thake, sorom lake, aro mohi doctor ke bhi uthi thake shi na, Nagaland prabhi patients kaan ahe na hai, toh tai koi thake shi ahi ya se, toh mohi koi shi thake, ito toh huni sa nai toh patients kaan breast cancer hua kaan Nagaland pra, he said, it to the common Yes, I have breast cancer, hoy, mui breast cancer ba bimarase, no li mui yes, mui to la treatment loya se quick na man, it to nishna kotado jolti koile ekta awareness nishna pi spread hobo arom one. Satis at the kan man la bai bunikan bacha amakan nimitebi to nishna to ekta awareness hobo quick na naglen TV la site for so, coming back doctor, I want to know is it necessary that the entire breast should be, breast should be removed uh, during the treatment? Okay, so that is again one of the common misconceptions that people have that 
once a female develops a breast cancer you know she has to let go of her breast mm. uh, now what we need to understand is that if a female is diagnosed in early stage there is a treatment option in which you can actually conserve the breast by a surgery which we call it as breast conservation surgery but in order for a female to undergo breast conservation surgery it is important that the disease is diagnosed at an early stage so there are certain uh, characteristics that the tumor must follow in order to a female to undergo a breast conservation but as i said unfortunately majority of the females that come to us they come in a advanced stage wherein the tumor is very large almost like if the tumor is occupying more than 50% of the breast tissue uh, it becomes impossible to conserve the breast so in that case yes we have to remove the entire breast but even in those cases we can reconstruct an artificial breast using other uh, musculocutaneous tissues from other parts of the female body and the artificially reconstructed breast you know uh, nowadays we have got such excellent plastic surgery uh, techniques mm. that it you can't even make out that it's an artificially reconstructed breast so even for those females who are unfortunate enough to let go of their one breast it can be reconstructed in a very good manner and they don't have to fear about it that is why it is also important that females come to us early because if they come to us early then only we can offer them a breast conservation Hmm. Uh, also what is the role of chemo chemotherapy in breast cancer okay so uh, chemotherapy is basically nothing but they are the medicines that are given to kill the cancer cells hmm. now if you see the three treatment options for cancer it is surgery radiation and chemotherapy now if you uh, concentrate or focus on these three uh, modalities you will realize that both breast uh, the radiation and the surgery uh, they are options for treating the local disease so if you have a breast cancer you remove it so that's a local treatment whereas chemotherapy is the only option that will treat the disease not only in the breast tissue but only also the disease that has spread outside the breast tissue so chemotherapy is given to tackle the disease at the local as well as distant sites now chemotherapy can be given either before surgery or after surgery in situation when the patient comes to us at an early stage surgery is offered first and then uh, in order to kill the remaining microscopic disease which you cannot see with your eyes chemotherapy is given after surgery but if the female comes to us at an advanced stage the tumor is very large the disease burden is very large so in this situation we give chemotherapy first the purpose here is to reduce the size of the tumor so that the surgery becomes easier apart from these two situations uh, the situation in which the breast cancer has spread outside the breast which we call it as metastasis in that scenario chemotherapy is the only option that the patient has which tackles the disease at the different sites hmm. do we have different treatments or therapies for chemotherapies and also different treatments such as hormonal therapy and what is hmm. the role of hormonal therapy in breast cancer so uh, what we need to understand is that breast cancer is not one disease mm. you know there are different sub types of breast cancer so you can have a female with a hormone positive breast cancer you can have a female with a her2 positive breast cancer you can also have a female with a triple negative breast cancer so uh, depending upon what type of breast cancer a female has different therapies can be given specifically for that particular patient so if a female has a hormone positive breast cancer then apart from chemotherapy we also offer hormonal therapy to that patient mm. then if the female has a her2 positive breast cancer now her2 is nothing but a target that is present on the cancer cells and this target is actually responsible for the cells to grow so if a female has a her2 positive breast cancer we give her a treatment that acts against the her2 mm. so this targeted therapy will benefit these positive patients more and give a better results so in today's world what we call it as personalized medicine every breast cancer patient is categorized differently and is treated differently all right doctor also you have talked about chemotherapy targeted therapy and then also hormonal therapy so we have another therapy called as immunotherapy and i would want to know the role of it in the breast cancer okay so 
as we know that uh, medical sciences especially uh, oncology is a rapidly evolving branch and we tend to get a large number of newer therapies in different type of cancers so immunotherapy is also uh, one of the uh, new boys in uh, uh, oncology uh, what we need to understand is that our own immunity is probably the strongest anti cancer mechanism that god has given us so in our body our immunity prevents a large number of cancers from developing so when a cancer patient actually develops the disease what it means is that the cancer cells have managed to fool the immune cells what basically immunotherapy does is that it tries to reactivate our immune system in a way that it starts to recognize and attack the cancer cells now uh, if you see the example of vaccines because we all have been recently vaccinated because of, for the corona virus mm. so what does a vaccine does vaccine stimulates our immune system in mm. order to fight a particular virus the same principle can apply to cancer therapy which is done by immunotherapy it rekindles your immunity and this immunity itself fights the cancer cells so the good point about immunotherapy is that like vaccines once the immunity gets stimulated even if a person is able to even if a person discontinues the therapy that immunity continues to fight these cancer cells mm. so the effect on immunotherapy that you get tends to be very long compared to any traditional chemotherapy so doctor would you tell me something about what would change and what would change the life of a patient after the treatment and his psychological factor or his different factors that would affect him after the treatment so that's a very important question and i'm really glad that you asked that because this is a topic which we hardly discuss so once a female once she has completed a therapy uh, obviously there will be some changes uh, that will happen in her life so there are two types of broadly two type of changes one is the physical changes that mm. will take place mm. and the other is the psychological changes that will take place uh now if we see the physical changes first obviously because of treatment like surgery and radiation there will be certain degree of physical discomfort that the female will have uh the classic example is when uh, the female undergoes a mastectomy or a complete removal of one side of the breast mm. then there tends to be some degree of shoulder discomfort some restriction of shoulder movements mm. some degree of swelling in the arms so that restriction will be there Uh, which is very well managed with uh, good and uh, aggressive physiotherapy so that is one physical aspect that definitely changes in the life of the female uh, <clears throat> some of the females also do complain of fatigue or a feeling of generalized tiredness mm. uh, after the treatment is completed and that generally tends to extend for months together mm. uh, this feeling of fatigue has also got a psychological component to it rather than being a purely a physical complaint but uh, apart from the physical issues which can be easily managed uh, the other more difficult to tackle issues is obviously the psychological issues again that has multiple aspects uh, one which we commonly encounter is fear of death and fear of the disease coming back somebody who has undergone extensive treatment and who has been previously diagnosed with cancer will always have that fear in her mind that you know whether my disease is going to come back or not whether i get this disease back then what will happen so that fear factor is there which we tend to see in a large number of our patients mm. and the most important thing to tackle is proper counseling you know reassuring the female that whatever best uh, you can do for her has been done mm. and uh, if she maintains a positive attitude and she looks at the positive sides of life that itself will help her you know in coping up with these uh, complaints other psychological issue that we commonly see is about the body image obviously some a female who has undergone a complete removal of breast uh, the psychological uh, impact of that of losing an important organ which is a part of your sexuality is obviously there uh, again as i said if we are able to reconstruct the breast to some extent that can be taken care of but apart from that in some uh, females who do not are not able to undergo a breast reconstruction they tend to have this uh, you know uh, the feeling of uh, that they are no longer attractive mm. especially in a married relationship mm. those issues tend to come into picture mm. so the best way to handle is you know you talk to both the partners and 
you know what we need to make the female understand is that uh, the breast is just an organ and it is just a part of her life it's not her entire life there are more uh, important things in life than just you know your physical beauty or your physical presence and if somebody is really uh, likes you as a person it should not matter whether you know uh, your physical being is the same or not hmm very right doctor i would like to tell our viewers that it is very necessary to have your self esteem and always put your self esteem first because self love ko adom man bishi jani ase and also bishi manu bra man nijor ke morom khuli na pare aro bishi manu bra man ki koba ekta physical change ekta hui jai le itu hui jai inga hui jai kobe itu man treatment ja pichite itu nishna ki ki alag alag therapies kan undergo ja pichite man hoy man physical aro psychological te bishi Changes can only bhap na can I believe pare holi be. We should always undercome it one stop overcome cruelly pare bolle lagye. Around man kiti abhi na problem lagye that God is always with us. And even if manu ek tarab bhori ke na jaa se koi le, we should never let that man la life they completely it to the effect cruelly ni dibolle lagye. And also doctor, uh, coming back to the question, is it necessary that the breast will form in both sides of the breast, or is it will it form only in the other side of the breast? So. in a normal individual obviously the risk of developing breast cancer applies to both the sides mm. uh the thing that if a female is diagnosed say with a right sided breast cancer and if she completes her therapy and all by default because of the fact that she has already developed the disease on one side the contralateral or the opposite breast mm. becomes a high risk organ for developing uh breast cancer mm. so uh that is it remains important that once a female is treated she has to be under continuous surveillance or we call it as screening program mm. even otherwise somebody who is not diagnosed or somebody who is not having any clinical features of breast cancer screening for breast cancer is extremely important now what we mean by screening is that uh, any female above the age of 40 years if she undergoes a test called as mammography the mammography is nothing but it's a type of x-ray that is done for breast so if she undergoes a mammography once a year then her probability of dying because of breast cancer is reduced by almost 50% hmm. which is much much higher than any medicine ha- that has to offer so this simple screening testing itself can save a lot of lives so that is an important thing that uh, we should do hmm. and suppose if a pregnant mother gives birth to a baby and she is detect- detected breast cancer so what would be the risk factor for her to feed the baby and what should okay. she do in this case okay so uh, the thing is if breast cancer itself develops uh, in a pregnant female or a breast feeding female hmm. so there are two challenges here that we mainly face most important is the treatment uh for the patient so that is an important part that the patient needs to be treated uh in pregnancy there are certain intrinsic risk factors that are associated with giving chemotherapy especially if you give chemotherapy to a female who is in her first trimester or the first 3 months of pregnancy then the chance of having uh, defects in the child is very high so if a female is diagnosed in the first trimester then obviously we need to discuss uh, about the urgency of treatment mm. whether we can wait till the second trimester or not how urgently the therapy is required so that that all factors has to be discussed the other point is that if she has already given birth to a child and at that point of time if she is breastfeeding mm. obviously when the female is on chemotherapy we don't advise uh, giving uh, breast feeds because some amount of chemotherapy is known to ex- be excreted in the breast milk which is known to harm to the baby so if the female is breastfeeding we don't allow her to breastfeed mm. we can ask the baby to be on uh, external feeds mm. and if she is pregnant first trimester is more challenging because at that point of time the chance of miscarriage due to therapeutic intervention is very high relatively the second and the third trimesters are relatively easy to manage and you can offer therapy in those uh, cases easily we have discussed on the different therapies of uh, the breast cancer and also about how it would be treated so i want to let our know uh, let our viewers know the cost of the treatment of breast cancer okay 
so uh, if you if you see the cost of therapy again it depends on how much modalities of treatment you receive mm. whether only surgery is required for you whether you require only surgery and chemotherapy or you require both surgery chemotherapy and radiation so again it all comes down to the fact that if you are diagnosed early if you come early you are diagnosed early you will require less treatment the mm. cost will be less uh, in terms of surgery uh, the cost is uh, somewhere between 40 to 50 thousand mm. this is just a rough estimate uh, but again if you are going for breast uh, conservation if you are going for advanced surgical techniques like axillary lymph node mapping you are going for advanced plastic reconstructions then obviously the cost uh, goes on the higher side but a very basic simple surgery would be costing somewhere between 40 to 50 thousand mm -hmm. uh, for radiation uh, the cost can range from say 80 thousand to up to 2 to 2.5 lakh rupees depending upon the technology of radiation that you are opting for mm. the best technology will cost you somewhere about 2.5 to 2.6 lakhs doctor does it also vary from hospitals to hospitals the treatment or how is it the treatment is more or less standard mm. so there are certain uh, specific guidelines that are laid by different bodies like nccn and esmo which guide us on how to proceed with a particular patient when she is diagnosed at a particular stage so there are strict set of guidelines that we follow so more or less uh, we tend to stick to those guidelines uh, but obviously uh, as an ad hoc patient you know some of the patients may not strictly fall into the criteria that is laid down by our guidelines and mm. in that cases we tend to have some innovative approaches uh, to provide the best disease control for our patients mm. also does the treatment the cost of treatment from is it like uh, not is it's different or should is the I yeah I just want to ask what are the differences of treatment in and outside northeast so basically if you see uh, there is a concept uh, in uh, northeast that you know if you tend to move out and go to other parts uh, other cities like chennai or delhi you know mm. uh, you know you will get probably get a better treatment uh, i would like to say that the treatment that is required for uh, managing cancers uh, including breast cancer they are extremely standardized treatments there are set of there are fixed set of rules that we need to follow once we administer treatment for these patients and i am really happy to say that as of today we do have all the facilities that is required to treat these patients available in northeast mm. so this therapy can be offered uh, to any patient you know be it of northeast or any part of india that treatment we can get here the only thing is many of the high end treatments which you know people have this concept that if i travel to europe you know i would get a better treatment and all mm. those high end treatments can be made available here the only limiting factor in offering high end treatments becomes cost because some of these treatments are exorbitantly expensive mm. so that becomes a limiting factor but in terms of making them available here the quality of treatment uh, i don't see any reason why we are behind uh, any other place mm. so doctor we we have this uh, men's breast cancer and we don't often discuss about men breast cancer but yes it it is common that women breast cancer is known to everyone now so what do you what do you think is uh, men's breast cancer and what what is uh, how is it different from women's breast cancer okay that again uh, very i would say it's a very important question because uh generally many people uh, don't even know that you know men also tend to develop breast cancer so even men also have breast though it is not as well developed as females because of the hormonal differences between the two sexes uh so just uh, as females tend to develop uh, cancer in the breast this disease can also affect men but yes the incidence is far less as compared to females the important difference here is that uh, since men don't have a well developed breast tissue hmm. and since the level of suspicion is low in men majority of these patients are diagnosed at an advanced stage compared to their female counterparts see in a female when the cancer starts to develop in the breast there is lot of fatty tissue present in the breast that will prevent or stop the spread of the disease into the breast men hardly have any fatty component of the breast tissue mm. so the disease tends to grow faster 
it involves the skin and the underlying muscles earlier that is why men breast cancer you know tend to present at a later stage compared to female breast cancers the treatment approach uh, to men breast cancer is more or less same as compared to female so we approach it in a similar way but because they are diagnosed at a higher stage compared to females the success rate tends to be slightly on the lower side mm. so is it uh, do you have patients more of women or men patients men obviously i mean women, women obviously okay. uh, men breast cancer is very uncommon mm. but i have treated a couple of patients during my training period mm. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, doctor, and also viewers. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We were discussing on doctor's life, and also the topic was we discussed on breast cancer. So, I hope you have all understood, and we. I believe that today, starting from today, we are not going to hesitate to discuss about this breast cancer. And also, we will take up necessary treatment and the approaches that uh, the science has given to us. So, uh, in this positive note, and also Naglan TV, in this note that uh, the treatment, the cost of treatment or whatever to do so with this breast cancer, we will take up this fast. And also, this doctor's life would be a very uh, awareness program so viewers that's all we have today in doctor's life you were watching show with me in listen like and also with our doctor dr naresh jada from narayana super specialty hospital <laughs>